Welcome, everyone, to the very first episode of Stark Raving Bad, the Bedlam and Discord Pathfinder spinoff. What are we? We're Twitch show. We're, we're an adventure. We play Pathfinder. We will be running the latest Paizo adventure path, The Tyrant's Grasp, the very final adventure path published in the first edition Pathfinder rule set. So that's kind of exciting. I am Jared. I am your guide. What's your height? I am six foot. If I stretch, I What's can be that in six centimeters? foot oh two. Can we get your age, sex, location, please? As I said, we are playing Pathfinder, and you, the listener, get to listen along and come on our adventures. We've assembled a great team of people, where I hope you find them uh, enjoyable. Without much more ado, why don't I just introduce you to them? We'll start with Mika here. Tell us a little bit about you, the character you're playing. Okay, hi, I am Mika. I have a full-time job in the esports industry, but I also stream, love playing tabletop games, video games, and um, love Keanu Reeves. So if Keanu Reeves is listening, please hit me up. Anyway, (laughs) the character I'll be playing today is a Tingu witch with the subclass of medium, so she speaks to the dead. Her name is Keelan, and she's like a raven, black feathers that she dyes different colors. She runs a business where she helps people get over their grief of their loved ones by reanimating their loved ones for 10 minutes at a time, which might be a little terrifying to some, but she makes a lot of money doing it, and that's what matters. I started out playing Call of Cthulhu back in middle school and then ventured into D&D, and I've played several D&D campaigns, and then you reached out to me for Bad, the live show, and that's my first venture into Pathfinder. So I'm very excited for my second venture into Pathfinder right now with you. How's it going? I'm Adam Kahn. That's all you need to know about me. Cool. No, I'm totally kidding. My name is Adam. Uh, I am a, uh, a sword fighter by Realsies. I work at a, a place that teaches sword fighting to people. I also work at a bird store, this Raven. Ha I am currently also on uh, Dragons and Things on Friday nights on Twitch channel as everybody's uh, other favorite dwarf. Yeah, yeah, you're not the favorite dwarf. Uh, the second favorite dwarf. I'll uh, leave it at that. I am going to be playing a Kitsune Ice Chemist. It is an archetype of alchemist. I come from an incredibly big family, 17 siblings. Uh, I've got a mom and a dad. He's a, he's a very interesting person, and you, you'll learn more about him as we go along in this fine, crafty adventure. I started playing uh, Pathfinder probably about 10 years ago when it uh, first came out. So I've jumped into a little bit of uh, D&D 5e. That's it. Nothing else. I do nothing else with my life. Pathfinder, birds, and swords. Hey there, I'm Shannon Corbet. I'm an actor and a writer, one of those tortured artist types. I've been playing 5th edition D&D for about two years now. We just started our third campaign. Pathfinder is brand new to me. Pretty overwhelmed by it. I think you guys are going to pick up on that. Just pray for me to whatever gods you hold dear. I will be playing Vinda, a fetchling rogue. I'm in it for the money. But we're getting paid for this, Jerry? Shannon. <laughs> oh, damn it. Luckily, I didn't plan this, but fetchlings are easily distracted by errant thoughts, and so am I. So that's that's going to be a pretty easy character trait to dive into. Hi, I'm David Blue. All right. You might know me from stuff. I am an actor on camera and voice and a writer and a producer and a director. And you might have listened to my podcast back in the day out of the blue. If not, why didn't you listen to my podcast back in the day? I played D&D in high school and then left it for a while. Not by choice, just wasn't playing. And then recently got back into it because all of my friends seem to be playing it again. I have never played Pathfinder either. So I am a newbie and have very little idea what's going on. You'll be hearing me asking a lot of questions, being very confused, generally doing things wrong. And if it's like my other D&D games, constantly rolling nat ones (laughs) and trying not to die because of it. I am playing Ink and a Freet Ranger. I don't really know how much I want to tell you about me. Let's just say uh, Anoma Dragons. Preferably from afar, because <laughs> uh, even though I am made of fire, I still avoid it. Well, I mean, there's dragons that breathe other things. Halitosis dragon. Halitosis dragon. I'm going to mark that down for later. <laughs> it's canon now, right? Uh, he attacks you with morning <laughs> breath. Roll a d20. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's the introductions. Uh, I say we jump right into this bitch. So I know I told you that we were going to start the night before. Everything happens, but I think uh, I think I'm gonna change it up. You lied to us before we even started the game. <laughs> I did. No trust. I, I, I had so so much stuff that I had planned out before well, I went to bed. But keep it keep it in mind. All right, fine. 
All is darkness and cold stone. Although you dimly recall going to sleep last night in the small community of Rosler's Coffer, you awake in a dark stone box, only a few inches larger than you in each direction. The cool scent of earth surrounds you. We're all in, all inside our very own boxes. You seem to be alone in your own box, yes. Oh, oh um, I'm going to po- poke around, start, start feeling if, if, if I can find a latch of, of some sort or anything. Is it, is it dark inside? It is dark. It is, it is pitch black. Pitch black. So unless you have dark vision... Or are on fire. I'm, I'm both. <laughs> but I think you give a dim light, as if a candle. Yeah, I, I do have dark vision. Can I see anything? I'm, I want to press against the roof of my box. I have, I have no, no, no light vision. You cannot see anything. If you have dark vision, you can make out a black and white wash of... It appears to be just carved stone. Uh, feeling around, you can find there is a seam along the top edge of this stone box. Is it sexy stone? I don't know. Are you a dwarf? <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, then you don't know. <laughs> also, you can't even see it. I want to brace my back against the floor and my feet against the ceiling and press up against it to try to open. Okay, give me a strength check. Do we have anything on us? You don't have the freedom of movement to check around. That you do feel that there is Oh, you guys can see in yeah. the, there is a pack and accoutrement down by your feet. I rolled a 21. Uh, so you brace against the back and you push with all your rogy might and you slowly lift off the top piece of this stone box. I'll use my mirror, hold it outside the box so that I can look at the reflection, see what's going on out there. Pause there. You three give me a perception check. Oh, inside the box. An eight. I have a plus five and then a plus five with my lens, so I have an yes, that, 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 13. That would be a 19. <clears throat> Eight. Starting strong, guys. Uh, anyone who got over a 15 hears the sound of stone on stone sliding. Ooh. And then stops. You raise your mirror out. You can't really make out a ton, even with your dark vision. You, you can see that there is some space out there, but nothing really in it. Give me a perception check. 16. The only thing you can really take in is that you see that there are a number of other similar stone square boxes. So I'm going to quietly load my crossbow. I'm going to take it with me. If something moves, I'm going to shoot it, and I'm going to climb out of the box. You, you managed to climb out without too much difficulty. Now that you're out, you can see that there are three other additional boxes, and in the far corner there is what appears to be a wooden crate with some canvas on top of it. Did I find anything in that bag? Everything that you have with you, or on your sheet, is in there. Cool. I take out the crowbar, put that into that little slot, right. give that a nice yeah, yeah. Give me a strength check. You jam it into that gap. and uh, 19. Shannon, you're looking around the room, trying to just take in and then out of the corner of your eye, you see uh, the lid of this other uh, box pop off pretty quickly. So you pivot and fire at it. So give me, roll a d20, just don't roll a one. It's the only stipulation. I have a <laughs> 11. Okay. David, because you give off a faint glow, you, Shannon, you also see. I mean, my hair is on fire. But <laughs> it's still a faint glow. Okay. <laughs> there is a crossbow bolt that comes and like you've taken it over and slid it aside and the crossbow thunk and then the bolt falls down into you. Hello? Roll to see if we hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 28. Jared. Uh, Jared, I rolled a natural one. You're uh, sleeping. You fell asleep <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> I fell asleep. <laughs> I was like, like, this is comfortable. I actually, so I, I heard him yell. You heard, you, heard, you heard a thwang tonk and then a hello? I'm just going to hang out and keep listening. To All be right. fair, it wasn't a hello. It was a more sarcastic hello. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Somebody doesn't want to get shot. How can I know for sure? <laughs> well, first off, you're not a great shot. Secondly, where the hell am I? Like I know. Looks like I was in the same position as you were just a few moments ago. What's your name? Vinda, who's asking? Vinda what? Cation. Cation? <laughs> where are we? I have no idea. Tell you what, put the crossbow down and I'll come out. All right. Right when I hear that, I just, I pop the hood on my okay, off. Give me a strength check. Five. <laughs> You're like, put the crossbow down and I'll come out. And then at that exact moment, you heard, <laughs> Was that you? No, there are two more boxes. So, so you could have led with that. 
<laughs> Are there anyone in the boxes? Are they open? So there's groaning from one, and then there's snoring from the other one. <laughs> <laughs> did you put the crossbow down? The crossbow is down. I did hear it be put down. Fire creature. I'm coming out. All right, you, you stand up. You see that there are three other, I hesitate to call them coffins, but let's call them coffins. There's three other stone coffins and a canvas covered crate in the corner. There is also uh, Vinda standing there. Uh, can you describe yourself to us? Sure. Well, I'm 5'5". Five, five. I enjoy long walks in the dark. I look humanoid, very close to a human. In fact, almost as if I descended from the human race. I've got kind of a greenish tint to my skin and long white hair that's tied back in a braid. I tell Ink the last thing that I remember is going to sleep in a town. And then I woke up here. What's the last thing you remember? <laughs> I'm all about uh, getting to know each other, but I'm pretty sure there's people in these other ones. Maybe we should figure out who they are before we get all friendly. I'm going to go another. All right. <laughs> strength, strength, if you want to help them, go for it. I think something's hatching. <laughs> Six. <laughs> yeah. You did one better. I mean, it does. It takes you back to your to your egg days. To uh, be honest. <laughs> I walk up to that one and knock on it and go, "You okay in there?" Uh, yes. Who are you? Tell you what, you answer that first, and maybe we'll help you get out. Mm, I'm good. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Stay in there and rot. I go to the other one. <laughs> Uh, it, yes, hello. I, I seem to have gone blind, and I'm 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 in a, a state of being squished. Look, these fools seem to be as confused as we are. Let's just I help them out and see if we can put our what put, you put our out? facts together. Yes, hello. Is there it's someone someone out there? 19. I hear a couple of voices. We'll help you guys get out, but do you know where we are? I'm I'll in, help you if you tell us something. I'm in darkness. That's about all I can You're actually like, tell, see. Tell me where we are, and then this two giant wings push off <laughs> the stone lid of this coffin, slide it aside. Jesus. I jump back. <laughs> and, uh, I pull out my trident. I imagine the bird pops pops her head up. Was, like, was the trident <laughs> in the coffin with me? <laughs> yeah, it's lying down next to you. You got it. <laughs> I, uh, I pull myself out, and I, like, brush off my feathers. Oh, well, that'll be fucked. How'd you, how'd you two get here? Wow, oh, I went British. <laughs> it's like a chipper British. Oh, I, could, I fancy a spot of tea right now. <laughs> Anybody else? Like oh yes, I, I love tea. If you if you could just help me help help me a little bit, please. Who's okay. that? I'll go help him. I grab the other side. Okay, strength checks. Sixteen. I'll, I'll try to. Not twenty, baby. <clears throat> Uh, to assist with pushing, I rolled a four. I have a negative one to my strength. <laughs> Combined, you guys managed to lift this 200-pound stone lid off. You just see me going, <laughs> and you, you reveal. Uh, I believe you're pretty young, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, fairly young. Actually, when you when you look inside, uh, you see a uh, an average-sized human male-looking person with very nice golden brown hair, but he has like these two little bumps in his hair that almost look like ears. Did I wake up in a zoo? Oh, I'm, I'm no uh, longer blinded. So now we got Shannon's description. What, what does ink look like? Uh, well, I'm wearing a hide, but uh, aside from what you can't see underneath that, uh, essentially a very short hair that is on fire. I'm 6'2", though, so I'm towering over you, holding my extremely pointy steel trident at you and you. I am four eight. The two creatures, <laughs> wondering what the heck is going on. So you're pointing your trident at me? I'm kind of going back and forth between the two of you. I'm gonna brush it aside with my hand and scoff at you. <laughs> you think death scares me? You don't know who I am? I know you have trouble getting out of boxes. That's not my job to get out of boxes. You, what is your job? My name is Keelan. I work for Keys Lost Words, where I am the key to unlocking your loved one's last words. Never heard of it. Who are you? My, my name is Sai. Sai Mekla. I perform an alchemy. I was actually at home in bed, and then I woke up in this darkened container, and now there's all of you. Are you all in my bedroom? I was sleeping in an inn. So you also went to sleep last night and then woke up here? Yes. yes and I you? Went to bed. I prefer to not tell you what I was doing with my night. Oh, you're one of those That <laughs> seems suspicious. For now some I want to know when I point the trident back at <laughs> How did you come to be here? I woke up here, same as you. I finally sit up. In the, the faint light, you see that there are four of the stone coffins, a oh. crate with a dusty drop cloth on it. Okay, so I'm going to go and investigate the crate. You investigate the crate. I That's, keep my trident I'm going to be them. checking for traps, like 
I'm I'm extremely wary right now. Everyone, give me a perception on the room in general, if you'd like. Uh, nat twenty little plus one. four. <laughs> So, 34. Right? Oh, yeah. You're, you're utilizing the house rule. That's Technically, right. it's an 11, but it is an at one. But if you rolled a one, a one so one, it's then that starting. would be negative. So, she got a one. It so works out to be an one. get one. Uh, 24. Mine was a six? You're looking for traps. Uh, you don't seem to find... You feel pretty confident there aren't any traps. Taking in the rest of the room. Yeah, what do I see? I rolled the best. I win. Other than the sarcophagus and the crate furnishing, various relief carvings are on the north wall that display several heroic figures. The words, Red Shrikes, Noble Companions in the War Against Evil, Rest Well, My Friends, are inscribed above the carvings. There is a single stone door that leads out of this room. And then there's just the crate other than that. So I'm gonna check out the crate, but carefully. Forgotten after centuries of abandonment. The crate contains a variety of dried out and useless paints, a crowbar, flint and steel, three common lamps, two hammers, one hooded lantern, eight pints of oil, and one dented pewter mug. I'll take the hooded lantern. Okay. How much oil did you say there was? Eight pints. All the oil. That's a lot of oil. I'm gonna take some oil. I take the mug, the flint and steel, and one of the hammers. Whatever she doesn't take, I just throw in my pack. Okay. Uh, while she went over to that crate, I wanted to go investigate those uh, painting or the the reliefs. The reliefs. Okay. Yeah. yeah give me uh, knowledge history. Knowledge history. I don't have that, but uh, that's so that's a four. Okay. I know my history of the town I grew up in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now the four. <laughs> <laughs> you think that there there might be something with the red shrikes? Like you know that there's something about it, and then the war against evil kind of brings something to mind, but not enough to pull it out of the reaches of your mind. I don't know what these uh, these depictions are on this wall. What uh, what did you find over there? Anything of use? Oh, I share with everyone what I find. Oh, goody. So you left some of that stuff. I'm gonna take, I guess, one of the lanterns and a, two pints of oil. All right. I walk over to the door and call back to this one. Hey, Rogue, traps? Let me check. Okay. What kind of check is it? Uh, perception. Okay, 20. Uh, nothing seems trapped to you. All right, is the door unlocked? Uh, it is. I'm gonna open the door. Do it. Open the door. I do it. All right. You open the door. This room contains several low shelves covered with rags and loose bones. A hallway extends to the southeast, while a stone door to the east, the one that you are coming through, is carved with the image of several heroic figures standing solemnly together. The figures represent the same ones that were in the previous relief on the wall. In addition to this, there is a single skeleton lumbering towards you. So we're gonna be at what we call initiative. Womp. Okay, initiative-wise. I've got a 20. Thing. I had a 14. Uh, her number minus 10. And I go last. Wait. You got less than four? No, I didn't. You got more than four. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ink, you are up and you're moving before this zombie. He has noticed you. Zombie? Or, I'm sorry, skeleton. Yes. Skeleton is going to, when he gets a turn, do a thing. But he hasn't noticed. Or he has noticed you. He hasn't acted yet. So what are you doing? He hasn't acted yet. He, he will probably be dead by the time it's his turn. Oh, okay. I, just, I thought you meant he hasn't acted. Like, I mean, if he's just like eating dinner, I'm not no, no, gonna bother he's, him. No, no, he's noticed you, and he, he looks at you with uh, with murderous skeletal. I wanna, you don't want to always Ink. assume a skeleton. Ink, is be fuck a him and fuck his dinner. Do you understand? Can I kill him instead? <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. Okay, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna take my trident away from her, but I don't like it for a second. And towards the skeleton, Let's see if it can skewer the bones out of him. I like lean towards him and I'm like, hey, let's see how effective this thing is. What do I add to that? Sorry. So 19. 19 to hit that will absolutely. I hope so. Absolutely. <laughs> if not, I'm leaving the room. Uh, so roll damage uh, oh, yes. as you've stabbed this skeleton, probably maybe between the ribs. Six. So that's a lot of damage. Okay. Um, you, you stab into it and if skeletons could make noise, they would probably say something like, ow. It's a bone on bone action. Mm. Um, bone you said you did action. six damage. I'll be the Foley yeah. artist for our team. <laughs> and what does my trident sound like? Shwing! <laughs> <laughs> Please ready that sound. Right. I'm about to fire a crossbow bolt. Before you do it, uh, he, it is engaged in melee. So it's a minus four to you to hit from with a ranged attack. Fucking Pathfinder. <laughs> well, in that case. I mean, you can, you, you can absolutely shoot. That's a thing that you can do. It's fine. I'll step forward and attack with my short sword. (laughs) 
Uh, 19, and it does seven damage. It's going to hit for seven damage. Thank you. Um, that brings us to Kaylin. Kaylin? Kaylin. Kaylin, it's your turn. What are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing, quite honest with you. Can the skeleton hear? Is that a thing I know about skeletons? Do I mean, they have they've, sense they've of hearing? Ears. Give me a heal check or arcana. I have arcana? Seven. <laughs> you know they have ear holes. Okay, and I'm going to pull up my sickle and I'm going to attack. It's not a scythe, right? It's the handheld one. No, it's a sickle. I always confuse scythe and sickle. Scythe is the Grim Reaper and sickle is the and two handles. It's the weapon that Ruby uses. Uh, 14. 14 is not enough to hit this skeleton. Cool. Uh, Sai, nope, not Sai. It's my skeleton. My skeleton, let's see. He's gonna claw at you with his hands. This is bullshit, I should be ranged anyway. Uh, he misses you gravely with I'm so a angry. seven. I look at him and I make a sign like I'm bringing my finger across my throat. He shakes his head, yeah, like I'm dead. True. <laughs> Uh, Sai's turn. Oh, oh, all right. I'm Sleepy going to, Sai. I'm going to step into the room, and I, I see the three of them around the skeleton, and I go, oh, oh, uh, make sure that you uh, keep that skull for me, too. Try not to bash it in too good. I could, I could definitely use some of that, uh, that bone dust for sure. I'm, yes. I turn around and say, feel free to pitch in. Oh, oh, you're doing fantastic. Don't worry. I want to go look at this shelf over here. What's on the shelf? <laughs> uh, you're looking at the shelf? Yes. Uh, the, you all can handle it. You're doing a fantastic job. Among the rags and bones, the shelves contain what appears to be a heavy mace, and that's what you could find without, like, you can give me a perception if you want to find more. Thirteen. Thirteen? Uh, you find a heavy mace. You also find three pearls, and that's it. Cool. Heavy I'm mace and three pearls. And some bones. I'm going to pick up all that stuff, right. and I, I will distribute later. Brings us back to ink. Time for the trident to meet his face. So slow for me to know these things. Uh, 21. That absolutely hits. 10. 10? You stab this skeleton as it crumbles to the ground. Uh, everyone roll a perception check. 16. 18. Uh, 10. 16. Fine, be better. You don't see it because you're like, okay, it's done now. You're looking in a corner, but you see that there's still something moving around inside of there. Inside of the skeleton? Inside of, like, where the, the skeleton bones crumbled. You see what appears to be a tiny skittering creature that looks like maybe an insect made of fish bones, and it's got a head full of glowing red eyes. I'm gonna pounce on it. Like, when a hawk dives down on prey. But first, we're here. I didn't know we were still in combat. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're cool. still in addition. Got it. So to be clear, I hit it with my trident. It crumbles into dust. I notice something. and There's something here, guys. What? Where? <laughs> Where the trident is pointed. Okay. It's essentially right in the pelvical bone. It's a dick insect. Okay, I'll take a stab at it. I mean, if I haven't seen it, do I have to, like, attack with a disadvantage or something? Uh, no, just roll to hit. Okay. Four. Four <laughs> is not going to do it. But you, to be fair, you were like, you just pointed this thing out. I don't know where it is. You're just like, where? The, the, the thing? Yeah. And you just like hit like the arm. And he's like, no, I said the pelvis. And you're like, I don't know what the pelvis is. <laughs> don't you uh, know where a dick is? <laughs> oh, I know what a pelvis is. <laughs> do you? Uh, <laughs> now, Keelan, now it's your turn. I'd like to pounce on it. Okay. Are you going to just try to... to do you have I'm going to try to put my hands over it. So you're going to essentially try to grab it. Yes. Okay, so give me a CMB, a combat maneuver check. 14. Okay, so you beat his defense. You pounce on it with your raven human weird feet. You can encompass it, and uh, it's it's inside there now. And then while it's in there, I guess it's going to... So can I tell if this thing is a dead thing or if it's... Uh, well, give me a knowledge religion check. 19. 92? 19. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you saw I am the ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in D&D &D history. <laughs> a level 192 knowledge history. Uh, it is not undead. It is squirming around in there and is going to try to bite you on your, your bird feet. Okay. Uh-oh, I'm going to get some damage. I, I might kill you, maybe. No. Uh, it is going to be a 26 to okay. bite you. Sorry. That Sorry, hits. a 22 yeah, that hits. to bite you. You're going to take like one point of bite damage, but sadly, you're going to take six points of acid damage. Oh, no. As you feel 
the, the liquid from this creature's maw. I am very bloodied. <laughs> eat into your your bird feet. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna immediately let go and <laughs> go into a corner and just. You, you can let go. Yeah. And that's it at this point. I can't move. That was his. With initiative. one hit point left, no, you can't I don't move think on you your turn. Move. Well, it's not her turn. Oh, it attacked. Bit his turn. Yeah. Got it. Psy, you hear a, a bird yelp. I assume. Hey, if you don't kill this thing, I swear to God. Uh, yeah, I, I, I look over, I, I have that heavy mace in my hand, and I just go, oh, and I smash it. Now you gotta be very careful, because her feet are, like, right there. Jared, is it the accent? You're trying to kill me <laughs> off. It's the accent, isn't it? Hold on, to be fair, you saw a creature in the <laughs> pelvis of something we killed and thought, yum? <laughs> Birds are weird. <laughs> uh, so uh, uncomfortable. 13. That is going to hit it. That is going to hit it. Cool. And do damage. Damage it. Damage it, Adam Con. Uh, that is going to be three. Three damage. <laughs> All right. I have a minus one to my good. string. <laughs> you, you get it. Its eyes glow a little redder. Sorry, oranger as they register the new foe engaged. And we come back to Ink. You didn't see the bite, but you saw the reaction of the bite. Right now, <clears throat> Keelan is like just hopping around on her feet. Just like. To be fair, we don't know that it was going to attack us. Someone just tried to eat it. Now we have to kill it. Uh, so I just, it's on the ground because it's tiny, right? It is. Trident's coming down on you. Dead. 11. 11 will not hit it. Oh, it's no. very small, and I'm using a very big weapon. I aim for my trident. It's so small that <laughs> the two points go on either side of it. <laughs> uh, Shannon. It's, is it scuttling? On its turn, it's going to potentially scuttle. Right now, it's right in front of... Keelan's feet, and you saw it get whacked with a mace. I think all I can do is hit it with the sword, so. I fail. I, I rolled a crit one. Crit oh, one? Oh, no! Ooh. This is going to allow me to use. Uh oh! Critical fumble deck from Paizo. <laughs> uh, roll a reflex save for me, DC 12. Uh, 13. 13. Okay, so you, you managed to hold on to your weapon because you struck the, the ground instead. But you managed to, to hold firm to the blade. No, no, no real harm, no foul. Aside from Keelan's only got one more chance here, and it's her turn. You're going to pounce on it again? Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> Keelan's running with her tail tucked between her feathers. I'm doing a full withdrawal, and I'm I'm trying to keep the weight off my feet, so my wings are flapping. But you can't fly. I can't fly. Yeah. But I'm at least relieving like five pounds of pressure. Like a chicken, I'm gliding. Uh, it is now its turn, so it is going to try to bite at ink. Cool. Don't get bit. So you see this thing kind of claw, like jump out with its its bite. Do you have a picture of it? Actually, this is a, this is like a proprietary thing that I've been looking for a picture that works. But <laughs> it tries to bite you and it misses. Well, I, I guess it is my turn again. You all are doing such a fantastic job. I did the same exact thing. Uh, that's an eight. <laughs> Not gonna die. In fact, I need you two to go back in the other room <laughs> for a minute. I've already hit it. Thank you. <laughs> She's jumping on things. <laughs> Ooh, new thing, jump. <laughs> Me yeah, so you, you swing your mace. It's not, you know, it's not your weapon, so you're you're adjusting to it. Now it's back to ink. Time to die. This this is kind of what, what we got. Gross. Ooh, yeah, definitely taking the trident down on that thing. Gross. Why did I get it? It looks <laughs> Well, it has fish bones. You're like, yeah. It looks like a tick with antlers. I'm not into it. Uh, <laughs> it's true. 16. 16 is going to hit it. Three. <laughs> Three? Yeah. You are grinding it down for sure. I killed the skeleton faster than the bug. <laughs> uh, you stab and it, it's starting to, to bleed this green, this greenish orange icker. Vinda! I rolled a 16 for three damage. That with my will short hit it. sword. Oh, you stab it and more entrails start to spill forth. <laughs> For those at home, Shannon just rolled a natural one on uh, Gold pouring fish. goldfish. The snack, not like live goldfish. Though. Though. Keelan. Yes. You're, you're chilling back here. Uh, <laughs> Keelan is actually going to continue running back, and she's going to get in her coffin and just kind of hide there. All right. All right. Because she's Go not feeling Back in good. your coffin? <laughs> yeah. Uh, sigh. Wait, the... I thought the oh, bug no, the bug. Yeah, yeah. 
Done. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. You almost got away with that. It had been for... Little teacher, teacher, you forgot to give us homework. <laughs> I'm honest. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. I told you I was playing a game yesterday and rolled a nat one, almost killed myself. We are attacking Psy. <gasps> oh, really? Way to go. I don't like him. <laughs> uh, is an, a 19 going to hit you? Ooh. Yes. You if you die down. because of this, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're going to take one point of bite damage. Oh. However, oh, no, you're no. going to take four points of acid damage. Oh, you might say its burn is worse than its bite. Hey, Jared, can you kill me, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm I just going to go. <laughs> so after it bites me and it deals damage, you guys look at Psy and his hair on his body. He actually starts growing more hair. His nose starts to elongate. His hair that was shaped in ears actually start turning into ears. And uh, before you, he turns into a true... Soon. You damn little buggy! I'm going to smash the hell out of you! That was very loud. Sorry. <laughs> he turned into Scrooge McDuck. For those that don't know, uh, Kitsune, Kitsune are fox folk. Picture Disney's Robin Hood. I Kevin Costner? A- yeah, yeah. Kevin Costner. He turned into <laughs> Kevin Costner. I wrote a 10 to hit it. That is not gonna do it. Do anything. Damn it. I'm just like watching this thing change and then do nothing and her jump on something, almost bleed to death and go hide in a corner wondering where the hell I woke up. In our next episode, we may add a fifth character of the healer variety, just throw that So out. we don't die. So you don't die. Um, but until then, Ink's turn. I don't like these bugs. Oof. <laughs> Nine. Oh, I'm getting no. tired. I'm it's not, like, oh, come on. It's not even just keep hard. stabbing at the ground, missing it. I mean, it happens. It happens. Vinda's already like, I'm over this nonsense. Oh, come on. 13? Just 13? 13 does hit. Oh, yeah. thank goodness. Okay, seven damage. Seven. Describe your killing blow to me. It's with a lot of profanity. It's a two-handed strike overhead, thrusting down on the damn thing. Ah! And then just overkill. I'll just keep going. You get bug juice all up yeah, on. But you have vanquished the creature in this room. You take note of your surroundings and notice that your bird friend is not in the room any longer. Uh, also, Adam Khan, you find uh, that that heavy mace is well made. I drink a health potion. All right. You and regain. then I uh, just kind of slink back into the room like I never left. You regain nine hit points. Who else has health potions? Because I don't. I just want to know for future I can make reference. them, but I have I had I need two. To I bought two. So, so you I've have used one. one. So do you have any? Uh, uh, how much are they? Vinda. I would have bought one. I didn't see the health potion, I think, when I was looking through stuff uh, to buy. It's 50 gold for a cure light wounds. Oh, well, I couldn't afford it, though. But you can make them, you said? What do you need ingredient-wise? I need time to, to make stuff. Because for alchemists, they need to spend at least an hour making their concoctions and do we have... extracts. So I pose, hey... Uh, we almost lost the chicken. So I and say we take a little bit of time, make sure you get us some potions so we're covered, and uh, then we go find out where the hell we are. Um, I can I can only make, uh, as of right now, two extracts. So I can make two potions of Cure Light. I cannot give you a potion yet. I can't do that until second level. So you can only make potions for yourself? As of right now. That's fun. <laughs> you have a thing, though, right? A thing? Yeah, you should have a wand, right? A wand? I don't have a wand. I thought you had a wand. No. I did say I was going to give you one, right? You did say you were going to give me one? I never got yeah, one. Yeah, do yeah. Do a Wanda Cure Light with 50 charges on it. Woo, cool. I'm going to touch you. Right. Before I do that, uh, you guys see Psy start turning back into his human form. His fur goes away. His nose becomes more humanoid, and he's back to having the ear shapes in his hair. I asked him what that was all about. I'm incredibly sorry. That is that is a side of myself I, I hope none of you have to see again. That is actually where the second half of my name comes from, Mechla. By uh, performing ice alchemy, I got really bad brain freeze, and it, it messed with my brain a little bit, so Mechla's kind of like my alternate personality, I guess you could say. He gets a little bit on the wild side. Don't worry about him. Are you taking an hour to do your potions up? Yeah. I'm going to take an hour to do a seance and channel a spirit into my body. I have no idea how this works. So how's this work? What's I have to find one that matches where we are right now. So when a medium channels a spirit, he gains a bonus on certain checks and a certain statistics, depending on the spirit. A first level medium spirit bonus is plus one. But my penalty is I have to strike for non-lethal damage and I will be following a paladin code for the next 24 hours. I cannot lie. I cannot do anything. I have to be so lawful, lawful good. good. Yeah. Okay. So you're essentially that 
character. I've basically control. channeled a paladin enemy, and he controls my body for 24 hours. You sound like him. Oh, I can change my accent. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that's your justification. Roy. Right. <laughs> Roy. Right, okay. Roy, right, I'm a paladin. Oh. Does that make our adventure interesting, guys? We're kind of landing different people with us all the time. She has accents. I have dual personalities. Perfect. <laughs> I have a trident. He has a trident, and she has a sexy voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Heroes for hire. Thanks for noticing. Much, but we're entertaining. <laughs> Is my potion concocting going to mess with talking to a spirit for you? No, I'm just going to be concentrating and doing a seance. Can I've got we, like candles lit and I'm like drawing with chalk on the floor. Yeah. So I just so watch. A bird drawing on the floor, <laughs> I just, randomly chanting. I just watch you both and pepper you with questions about what the fuck is going on. I completely ignore you because this needs my full concentration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, unless anybody's like doing anything fancy. Um, I just have to change up my spells. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're waiting on Mika. No, you can go ahead. I am. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start down the hallway. All right. Uh, the hallway continues forward, but about halfway down, there's a small alcove on the east wall. It contains a few stone shelves. Are they sexy stone shelves? No. Stone. So sorry. You're not Kimbleton. Sorry. It's not. Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, 14. 19. Combined, you manage, you can dig through the shelves and the stuff. The shelves contain supplies probably intended for visitors that never came. Uh, a dozen candles. There seems to be a silver holy symbol to a god. I got a 14 knowledge religion. Um, it is a symbol of Erodin. There is also a wand of create water. I take that. And what would that be a check on? I think it use magical device. So one wand of useless. Should we give it to a magical person? I'm a magical person. Hey, there's our you fifth can, character. I mean, you can hang on to it. <laughs> uh, what else is on the shelf? There's an elf. No. Uh, five, <laughs> five potions of cure light wounds. Well... <laughs> this is why we go down like hallways first, guys. Uh, so you want to you just divvy these up? Um, you guys go ahead and divvy those up amongst yourselves because I have that wand if need be. So How many hit points do you have? Ten. I have 14. You have, I have eight. You're a paladin now, right? Right now I'm a healer. Do we know that? Did you tell us that? No. You hey, have... what have you been doing? Oh, my good friend. Uh, I just got here. How many potions do you want, <laughs> Carrie Vendelo? Uh, I'll take two. Okay, I'll, I, I'll take two as well. <laughs> two potions of cure light wounds, you said? Yes, cure light wounds. And then there's also a healer's kit. And this allows you to add plus two circumstance to any heal checks. I could take that. Just sit in the back like, bam, bam, bam. What are you bamming? <laughs> Easier to run. <laughs> Heals it. It's a touch spell. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like touching them. Heal check is, is moving the hair out of somebody's <laughs> eyes to, to make sure they're not bloodshot. So, so you, you take the healer's kit. And yeah. one of the potions. Yeah. The hallway does continue past here, but I'm going to go in there. I have block text to read. Insert tab A into tab <laughs> <laughs> The marble walls of this large hall are carved with several images of battle, each featuring a knight astride a lean horse. The knight wears no helmet and has long hair and a wide mustache. In each of the images, the knight is charging at an undead horror with a rapier in hand. A whore? An undead horror mm. with a rapier. You're saying whore wrong. Two halls lead out of the western portion of this room. One to the north and one to the south. Uh, yeah, Look, these guys, a hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Three large archways lead out of the room to the east. The archway to the northeast is carved with the words, At my right hand, peace for years of righteous labors. The archway to the east is carved with the words, Roslar, hero and paladin at his well-earned rest. And the archway to the southeast reads, Loyal Abdel, support thy master always. Sprawled in the center of this room is a human-sized metal figure that resembles a skeleton wrapped in robes. Uh, the drawings that we now have to look at look vaguely like a four-year-old drawing its parents dead. It's just a stick figure with a, a translucent, <laughs> apparently, blanket over it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to step in, uh, check out the statue perception, I'm assuming. We're all going to stay back in that hallway. For Thanks, hallway. guys. Give me... On, on the humanoid-sized metal skeleton thing. Perception Give me check. a perception. 14. 
It appears to be a metallic sculpture uh, of a human without limbs. At one point was probably pretty shiny and lustrous, but now has lost its luster and is melted partially by acids. Great. <laughs> and there's a reason for that, because it's going to be initiative now. As you approach the metallic skeleton, there is a skittering from underneath. It's a bug. Get out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Pops out. Don't again. jump on us. So initiative again. Is anybody above a 20? Above a 15. <laughs> above a 10. 14. 13. Above a 5. 8. 6. So I am last. And, okay, Ink, since you're right there, you see this creature kind of moving around, getting ready to jump out at you. Time to exterminate this mofo. Well, to attempt it. Ten. <laughs> Ten's not going to do it. What is going on, Die? A uh, key. What are you doing? There's uh, something in there. And you saw uh, Ink try to stab it with his javelin. Yeah, I remember that that movement from yeah, before. Yeah, I'm him. Okay, and you're going to go get uh, your coffin? No, I'm going to ready myself to support my teammates from afar. I got a business. Chaotic, okay. Uh, you do you, boo. Wait uh, a minute. Is that what you would do or what the paladin would do? Well, he doesn't really, like, take over until... Oh, darn it. He influences me three times. But you do have to live by a coat. Shit, you're right. <laughs> Gotta protect your friends. I would be there with him. I would ready my sickle. Hey, guys. Because she's possessed, she's helping us. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice? I'll take what I can get. All right. I'm going to make an attack with the crossbow. Well... Then does a 12 hit? It does not. It does not. I go fuck myself far away from the (laughs) (laughs) skeleton. Valiant effort, though. (laughs) It it clangs into the the metal corpse of whatever this thing was. Oh, no. uh, Before. Is it the last time it was in something, guys? Sai, your turn. Oh, um, I'm going to to run up and smash it with my new heavy mace that I just received. Smash, smash, smash away! That's what you're doing? Woo! Yeah. A 13. 13 is not enough, my friend. 13's not a hit either? A uh, flame guy. You think you can, like, heat this uh, heat this whole thing up? I once did a seance for a guy who died inside of a bowl that they put a fire under. I think we could do that with this guy, you know? We don't have to get our hands dirty. My 1d4 burning hands I don't think would actually help us all that much. <laughs> hey, I had I some faith it, in you for anything, a If anything, the bug would be like, thanks, it's warmer now. <laughs> You've missed with your mace, and now it is the creature's turn. Let's call this thing an Ostovite. Ostovite? Because that's what you're fighting. It's an Ostovite. Six. Attack and ink. You're familiar with this attack as it opens its mouth to try to bite you. Uh, That is not going to do it. You rolled very low, so he missed you. He's adjusting to your height. Next time he's going to get you. He's ready. That was him biting Inkster. Uh, that was him missing. That was him missing. Oh, bite. for fuck's sake. You're not good with tiny things, are you? Clearly not. I aim my trident at it and hit the ground yet again. So you you, you, you stab, I don't want to say wildly because you didn't miss horribly, but. I, mean, I got a, it was a seven. Yeah, I just woke up in a coffin. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's all new. Up. It's all new. Uh, I don't hour, like bugs. You had an hour to stretch while we were doing our stuff. Uh, Do not protecting. stretch at all. No. Kaylin. I'm going to move around. Okay, so you can do an... I just want to touch him. I just want to... <laughs> I want to lay my hands on this uh, guy. You can five-foot step to be behind Ink, then he's able to be touched. Okay. I'm going to be there, and I'm going to reach out, and I'm just going to like put my hand on your shoulder. I'm like, hey, this is a gift from my uh, my friend. All right? Uh, oh, I feel, I feel guidance. <clears throat> so you get a plus one to all attack rolls. Uh, Vinda. So I'm running back into the hallway so that I can try to do a sneak attack. So it doesn't, it's not, it says sneak attack. It's not necessarily. It won't work. It- no, a uh, sneak attack is basically when the target is denied its dex modifier. <sighs> okay, well then I'll just again fuck myself. <laughs> All right, 17. That, that hits it. Good. That's going to hit it. So, okay. eight. An eight. eight. All right. Size turn. I'm going to smash it! Smash it. Woohoo! Sixteen. Sixteen. That's going to hit it. That's going to be for two. So, all right. So, you, you, you bash it with your, your newly guided mace, and you hit it, and its eyes glow that, that glowing, haunting orange. On its turn, 
it does a full withdrawal and runs towards the archway. So that archway? Yeah. Middle one? So, Ink, it's back to you. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and throw my trident at it. Bye-bye, trident. Wait. It's <laughs> <laughs> not probably going to happen, right? Should the, I not throw my trident? The bug just, like, picks it up and carries <laughs> it out. I like this trident. Don't put ideas in his head. <laughs> well, now I don't want to do <laughs> We got to kill this thing. Really Otherwise... Don't. It's like a spider that you don't kill. It'll come back for you. 24. That absolutely hits it. And it doesn't matter unless you can do less than one damage, and you can't. You impale this, this, Eight. this creature. His dice said zero. <laughs> <laughs> teacher, teacher, his dice said zero. <laughs> you impale this creature, and its corpse in your trident lodge into the plaster decoration around the archway. Does this creature Sorry. have a way of speaking? While she's asking the universe that, I'm going to go get my trident. All right. Uh, you the can bug, do, so I can't search it or anything, right? <laughs> you can do a knowledge arcana if you want to figure out information about this creature, maybe. Or arcana. 20. 20. You can learn some of it, some things. Oh, my God. Guys, I know what this is. Wow. It's, like I said, this is an ostevite. It's an ostevite. An abyssal scavenger. It's a, a, sc- across a scavenger from the abyss. Demonic battlefield. What kind of scavenger? Abyssal. From the abyss. <laughs> Yes. I noticed you skipped over one of those uh, words. <laughs> are we in a demonic battlefield? Was it feeding on a corpse? Are you doing a Dewall accent? <laughs> <laughs> when they find these corpse morsels, they use their acidic saliva to digest the flesh, taking what they need for sustenance. This guy tried to digest me. You do not know if it can speak or understand. I hope not now. Yeah, that's what you got. I check the body. If you have knowledge engineering. Did you say in dungeoneering? Engineering. I will also give I'll give you a general knowledge check. Everybody? Straight Everybody. up knowledge. Ten. Fifteen. Eighteen. Nope. You're all dumb. Okay. I'll give you a knowledge religion check as well. See, I read further down the page. Twenty one. Uh this is a Keladon. It is essentially a construct created by a deity to see to basic deeds. This was maybe a caretaking construct of the, the thing. Oh. Is there anything else in this room at all other than these archways? There's nothing else to search or Correct. see. There's no stuff. Did you say there's another hallway? There's a hallway that leads to the south almost directly across from the one you came in. So that, that, that little creature was on its way into the... Down to the middle doorway until you um, so gallantly threw your trident and destroyed. I will. Its... I will let you roll a knowledge religion or knowledge history on the the name the Rosler. Nineteen. Nineteen. You're from here, right? Yes. Rosler, the, the name of the paladin inscribed on the center arch, bears the strikingly similar name to Rosler's coffer, the town that you live in. Yes, I, I tell everyone this. Yes. You know him to be a paladin of the Knights of Ozum. And you're, you're starting to put this together with that, the mosaic that you saw. It's starting to, starting to click in. Right, uh, right. He participated in the Shining Crusade almost a thousand years ago where he died a hero. You know that Rosler was enamored with, let's say, Arasni. Arasni, oh yes, was, yes, Arasni. He was enamored I, with Arasni, I, I, the I know angelic Arasne. red crusader and herald of Aerodin. Aerodin was also the patron saint of the Knights of Osram. You also recall that a cloud of scandal hung over Rosler after his heroic death. But you do not recall what that scandal was. There's something very mysterious about him, but I don't quite remember. I'm kind of curious about the other two rooms before we go into the one that the bug was retreating into. So I want to... I'm just going to peer into here. That's the north one? Northeast. Uh, You see several long stone slabs line the walls of this room like shelves. The shelves are pitted with acid and contain scraps of old cloth. A few chunks of bone litter the floor. So it's just broken down stuff, nothing really to go take, probably. Uh, nothing that you can see f- from a cursory glance. Does anyone have knowledge planes? I do. Give me a knowledge planes check. 15. Uh, examining the carvings closely, you can see in addition to the mortal companions, a slender winged woman with a heart-shaped face and long hair, looking down benevolently on Rosler. This image represents Aranzi. In the room I'm looking in, or? In the, in the main room, she's picking this up in that, in that main room. Late in the Shining Crusade, the Whispering Tyrant captured and killed Arazni, and she was later animated as a lich bride by an evil ghost wizard, Ooh. Geb. Ah, uh, I recall hearing about all of this. Uh, I'm gonna peer into this room too. The south one now? Yeah. Okay. 
The stone walls of this room are carved to resemble an airy stable with a large stone box at the southern end. The lid of this box is cracked and corroded as though from a powerful acid. An illustration of a lean regal stallion in the words, no greater friend hath a man than his loyal steed are chiseled into the stone above the box. There is also a small, uh, roughly one foot hole on the, uh, that is the east wall of this, like some sort of burrow or tunnel. I kind of want to search these rooms, guys, but what do you think? Yeah, I'll come with you. But I th I'm still curious about this one, which has just had a bunch of looked like acid burn shelves, but that doesn't mean there's not something up there that we can take. I'll come with you to the north. Okay. Do you want to scope out the south? Yeah, yeah. Never split the party. Well, we're, we're 20 feet away from each other. <laughs> we have 10 hit points. That is where we're going to end it for today. Oh, oh really? <laughs> come on, let's oh. just go through this stuff. You'll have to wait till next I time. I want to meet... Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's like we didn't do enough, Jared. Come on. Look, you got out of the first room and into the second one. What more do you want from a session? I want to lay my hands on more shoulders, Jared. Give it time. Don't do it. Don't spend and them all at once. And maybe some butts. You don't need to play Pathfinder to do that. God, you're right. And that is going to conclude the very first episode of Stark Raving Bad, the Bedlam and Discord podcast. And where can we find you on the social medias? Hey guys, I'm Shannon Corbet. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shannon Corbet, C-O-R-B as in Bravo, E-I-L as in Lima. Hey guys, this is David Blue. You can find me on Twitter at David Blue and Patreon at David Blue and Instagram at David underscore Blue or all of them on my website, david-blue.com. Hi guys, I'm Mika. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook as Siren Mika, or Instagram as The Siren Mika. Hey guys, I'm Adam, and you can find me at Twitter and Instagram at, at Azerold1. That's A-Z-E-R-O-L-B and the number one. Hey guys, I'm Jared. Oh yeah, yep, yep. Did that well. Hmm. Jared here. You can find me across all the socials at Jared Hoy. You can also find me on Twitch at The Real Gobshite. You can follow the show on Twitter at Dat Bad Show or on Instagram at Dat Bad Show. If you're interested in supporting the show, check us out on patreon.com slash Stark Raving Bad. You can visit our website at bedlamandiscord.com. Huge thank you to Dogmite Games for providing us with one of their Valhalla GM screens. They are unbelievably cool. Go check them out at dogmite.com. Very special thanks to our Paragons, John C., Tobias T., and Sarah C. That's it for us here at Bedlam and Discord's Stark Raving Bad. Until next time, I have no audio podcast equivalent of finger guns, so just pretend pew, pew. That was dumb sign-off. <laughs> <laughs>